Hi guys, I'm Yusuke from Karate Dojo Waku, and today we have a special guest, Gerald from JKA Australia. Uh, please introduce yourself to the camera first. Thanks, Yusuke. So my name's Gerard. It's great to be here. I've, I'm a, a practitioner at the Japan Karate Association, or JKA for short, mm -hmm. and I've been doing karate since I was 11 years old, so wow. for, for quite a few years already. Could we, could we say that you're the president for UK Australia? Yeah. So, yes, that in the video am, or no? <laughs> oh, that's the... Look, I, I, yes, I am the youngest uh, president of the Japan mm. Karate Association of Australia. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's nice uh, to be able to be role models to the younger generation in that mm. way. Right. Thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to have you on my channel today. And I always look up to JK because I believe their education system is very thorough and that um, even in the small countries where karate isn't so popular, I see the JK practitioners, their karate level is very high. So I wanted to know what, what's their secret, you know, behind their uh, training. So I have a couple questions for um, today. Sure. Uh, first, starting with the kata part. So I noticed, um, especially, I mean, there are a lot of styles within Shotokan too, but JK, their dynamic body movements are very, um, I think it's very special in their style. What do you guys concentrate the most when you practice kata? I think in kata, there's a very strong emphasis on mm. the smaller parts or the, uh, mm. the basics. So in JKA, there's a very strong focus on basics, on kiba, mm. and I think that mm. that's what makes the katas in JKA very special. So, for example, uh. the minor detail like the um, the pushing from the heel, uh, making mm -hmm. sure that the power is directed where you're attacking or yes. um, essentially blocking. So there is a lot of emphasis on the basics in JKA karate. Ah, uh, I see. So. First, I guess you guys focus on the very, very basics and you keep on repeating that over and over, right? Until it becomes over, auto automatic for you. Until it becomes to the stage that, yes, we can execute the technique as as finely mm. as we as we can. So mm. training in uh, karate, in JKA, mm -hmm. is, uh, yes, dynamic in a sense that we always uh, stick to the roots um, that, Gishin Funakoshi Sensei had mm. founded, um, and we try our best to maintain those mm -hmm. basics in our training. Mm, I see. Thank you so much. Especially for the kata of Kanku Dai and Bassai Dai, are there any specific points that you guys especially focus on? It's interesting because, uh, of course, Kanku Dai is looking to the sky, and Bassai mm. Dai is penetrating the fortress. <laughs> so I remember my sensei, Nishimura Sensei, uh, telling a story to me that. Kankudai is essentially the the culmination of all the Heian katas together. Mm, mm. And uh, of course, um, Kankudai is also dynamic in a sense that the height changes yes, during yes, the kata. Yes. And um, I remember Nishimura Sensei telling me that if you do it four four times, uh, that's mm. a full workout. <laughs> so, <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> it's so, very long. Yes, yes, Very yes. long kata. Um, totally. I think the longest, yes, yes. Am I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, the longest. Maybe, is yeah, I think karate. so. 65 movements. 65 movements. <laughs> there's that much. Oh, wow. <laughs> there's that much already. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it is, it's a tiring kata. Um, it is. But um, I guess it is quite fundamental to JKA because, again, going back to the basics of mm. the kata and Basai Dai, it's, it's an interesting kata. I enjoy practicing Basai Dai. But mm. it's the hip movements, especially the right. emphasis on gyaku hamni. I'm not Gyaki sure. <laughs> gyaku hamni. I'm not sure. Many many may actually be using the hip as square as only shomen, mm. but not emphasizing the gyaku hamni. Mm, so mm, mm. it's it's very um, again very concrete basai dai. But kankudai and basai dai, I always I always wonder um, the relationship between the two. Um, but Kankudai, mm. it's definitely the basics aspect, I think. Ah, uh, I see. If you like the video up to this point, I do online group lessons as well. So if you like to learn karate with me and give you guys personal feedback, then please consider um, subscribing to my group lesson as well. Uh, it was pretty interesting because I always thought, from my perspective, Jion was more focused on the basics. And when I thought about accomplice kata after the Heians and Tekkis, Jion would pop up in my head. But it was interesting how you mentioned Kanku Dai was a more of a combination of 
basics. Do you, what do you think about Jion then? Do you think that's a more complicated or like how is it different? That's a good question. I I'm, I've never been a fan of Jion. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> really? it's actually yeah it's actually my least favorite kata. I have to admit. Oh, it's, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like kankudai. So. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, so I, I, I actually prefer Kankudai a lot more than Jion. But oh. in that sense, it's interesting you bring that up because Jion, it's not... Uh, I try not to say I, I dislike each kata because, of course, each kata has its fundamentals. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. quite valuable. But Jion, there's... It's a lot... Um, I feel that Jion has a lot of focus on um, quite deep and very emphasized stances. And ah. Kibadachi and Zenkusadachi, if uh, if you don't have the, uh, I guess the correct transitioning when moving mm. in Jion, it could be mm. not as as the best version as you could be. So mm. Uh, mm. I struggle with Jion. Um, so I it's interesting. There's a lot of basic uh, techniques in Jion, but I feel that mm-hmm. um, you need time to place emphasis on the the the. Um, the stance of Jion, Kibadachi right. and, and Zenkusadachi. It's very difficult, mm. I find, at times. Ah, I see, I see. How about, um, let's say, when you're teaching someone, like little kids or someone that just started karate, what do you think people should focus on first? And how do you think, uh, what kind of topics do you think should progress along, you know, going to their black belt? So what, what's the, what, maybe if you can break it down to three things that you should learn first. And then one thing to add on next, what would be those? That's a good question. I, I guess <laughs> what I find with students is that they don't know the trajectory of where where they're going. So ah. I guess with students, they need a, uh, guidance on, for example, when executing a technique, always center. Um, right. Especially right. with uh, chukuzuki, it can't be mm. over to the other side. Mm. It has to be quite emphasize moving in one line a uh, direct line so i guess mm-hmm. first would be i guess the trajectory of where you're um, blocking or attacking right. would be right. yes hi and i guess moving forward from that you could start uh using the hips so uh. Uh, i i feel that once the trajectory is there the utilization of hips can help but i i'm always uh focusing on the hikate as as well oh, during basics. I see. Hi. Uh, I noticed that um, not many students know how to utilize the hikete when executing a block mm, and mm, uh, mm, attack. Mm. So I'm. I hope that answers the the question. But I guess in that sense, the the trajectory of your technique, utilizing mm-hmm. the hip, and then Hips, of course, and then hikete. Hikete. Um, mm. as, as the one of the most uh, basic, uh, basic mm-hmm. forms first. Uh, but I guess then you'd focus on stance, um, <laughs> emphasizing the use of stance. Um, but of course, that would come at a phase uh, um, mm-hmm. within that earlier stage. Right, right, um, right, right, right. Teaching, yeah. When you talk about the hikite, wh- what do people usually mistake? So when you say some people can't do it correctly, what's the mistaken way of doing it? Yeah, I think a lot forget that the hikete actually derives the attacking hand as well. <laughs> <I> remember? Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hi. Yeah, I'm not yes, sure yes, many yes. people realize that. So I remember mm. Nishimura Sensei always telling me that the hikete is actually where the power derives from, as well as your hips. So mm, uh, mm, hikete, mm. I know many people relax the hikete actually, the mm. elbow sticking up. Right, right, right. Yeah, but it should really be yeah, quite... opposite movement. <laughs> opposite movement. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I see, I see. Yeah. I guess if they don't understand that, you know, this side is just pulling and this side is just pushing, like pushing. sliding like this. Yes, ex- right, right. That, yes. It's absolutely. just like pulling a string, right? If you wrap around the string around the pole and then you pull each side yes. like this. Same exact if, if thing, you... right? It makes sense that way, yes. Mm. Um, so I hope that the yeah I hope hikete can be more valued as compared to mm. other. Te- <laughs> I guess the focus on the mm. attacking hand. Hi. I see, I see. So if you guys want to um, punch strong like JKA athletes, then hikete <laughs> trajectory and hips, right? Those Hi. three. 
fundamentals. Thank you so much. I guess uh, this is it for the video today. Uh, thank you, Gerald, for coming to the channel today. I hope thank you for uh, having we can. Me, uh, no problem. I hope we can cover more JK related style on my channel in the future. So if you can, please come to my, come onto my channel again. <laughs> it will be and my pleasure. Thank you so much. And for other videos, uh, please check these out and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.